All right, let's talk about the buy-in strategies. Uh, this tip buy-in strategies I've personally been using for about seven years now. I've been tracking all different types of buy-in strategies, as you can see in the trading technique and also in the duck cylinder courses. There is a buy-in strategy called the pre-market dip buy. That specific strategy only works on a low float and really depending on the market seasonalities. So if the market was really hot, if it's trading uh, 100 million every day, then the pre-market breakout works out really well, but it does not work on um, uh, if the statistics or the volume are not very stable. So I kind of left that one out. So in this specific course, I only want to focus on the dip buy. This is high winning percentage, high reward, and also uh, it doesn't really happen that often. That's the disadvantage, but it does have the ability to sizing much bigger. And also um, there's a much bigger reward than the pre-market breakout. Let's talk about a couple of the criteria. First one is the market cap has to be over 1 billion. Uh, the minimum is actually 500 million. Uh, of course, if you stay uh, as long as over, if it's 1 billion uh, before the momentum shift, you're good to go. If the initial market cap starts uh, under 100 million, it is okay. But if you ran all the way up to uh, $1 billion market cap, then the dip buy strategy still work. Of course, the higher the initial cap, the better because higher market cap ticker tends to have much better fundamentals. Uh, the second one is um, it has to be running for minimum three days. Uh, so overall in three days it has to be up at least 300%. It can be around two days, but two day criteria has to be much more strict. It has to be up around at least 1000% from the bottom. So three day it's 300%, two days 1000%. Then uh, number three is the 50% pullback is needed after its momentum shift, either it's a parabolic drop or a consolidation breakdown. As long as you can see the stock instantly pulls back 50% from the top within 30 minutes to an hour, then that's something you want to be focused on. That's That will be your dip buy strategy. Now there's two small points I want to cover. First of all is offering doesn't count, but most of the time that offering occurs in the pre-market or in the after hours. So those two don't really have to pay attention to. But if the stock does T1 or T12, uh, then uh, T1 is a news pending. T12 is getting uh, investigated by NASDAQ. So either both of those two uh, happens, then the stock instantly drops 75% from the top. So you don't have to buy that because T1, T12 typically will never come back. Number four is if the stock trades massive liquidity. So uh, the stock needs to trade at least 100 million volume on intraday before you want to dip buy. Uh, it's not the pre-market volume estimate because if you use pre-market volume estimate, if the intraday volume, it's going to trade 100 million, but you need to wait until the stock trades 100 million first before you dip buy. So that's a little bit different. Check the volume first, 100 million at least before you buy. So the last point is, this, uh, the higher the stock price, the better. So the stock is $20, it's much better than the $5 if you try to dip buy. And of course, the lower the price, that means it requires more volume. So $20 drops to $10 dip buy, it's going to be uh, much profitable than $5 drops to 2.5. But for them to stay equal odds, the lower priced ticker or stock needs to trade at least twice as much volume. Let's talk about the winning factors for dip buy strategies. First, uh, the more volume, the better. So there's no cap for the volume. If it's trading 1 billion volume, 2 billion volume, then there's much bigger odds for the stock to going to bounce. The second is the faster the drop, the better odds for it to dip buy. Uh, if you encounter that the stock is slowly fading from the top, if it's taking three hours, four hours to fade, then there's no dip by opportunity. You need the 30 minutes to one hour fast drops, uh, not including the whole time, which is 10 to 15 minutes, but the actual trading time, if it's 30 minutes to one hour, uh, drops 50%, then that's a great situation to dip by. Number three, if the stock has previous high liquidity support, if the stock trades uh, 200 million as a consolidation in the previous day, 
and it does have a solid support right at the 50% level, then that's something you want to dip by using that consolidation as your risk. Uh, number four, it's pretty much the same thing, goes to number three, is if it drops the same percentage level and right at the chart, and that 50% mark has a support at the right time, ju just at the right level, then uh, it's going to increase your uh, winning percentage. And the last point is if the support are multi-layer, if the chart is stacking support, that will be the best scenario for you to dip by because uh, for the stock to drop under a multi-layer support is going to be very difficult. Uh, if it has more than two layers of support, I have never seen a stock run through multi-layer support without a bounce. So let's talk about the average return for the dip buy. The average return for the dip buy is around 50% to 100%. Uh, this pattern is um, it does have a really good profitability. And if you, you have to time it really well because um, there is some catching to it. So first of all, this is not a gap up short or bound short. Typically bound short and a gap up short, you only need maybe one or two entries, then you are, have a set risk, max loss, and you're ready to go. But for multi-day runners, you have to break your entry into multiple parts, especially with the situation without support. Personally, for me, I have tried many methods. I think four to five tries will be good enough especially on our entries. So first one or two, three entries can be sizing in into weaknesses when the stock drops under 50% uh, no, from the top. Then the rest of two entries can be used to spot if the stock is forming double support or triple support, or it's bouncing from the bottom uh, from uh, the weaknesses. That's where you want to size in to get uh, average it up and getting full size and to get a decent entry. And without support, four to five entries. With support, uh, two to three entries. Then number four is the risk is difficult to control, uh, especially without support. That's why you need four to five entries because you need to get you know, the right idea and the right risk into it. So uh, you have to wait until the chart develops until it forms either a support or it's bouncing from the support. That's where you can start uh, manage your risk from there. So play along as you go uh, if there's no support. Number five is whenever you spot a support or consolidations in a, at the 50% or 60% mark, you want to dip by 10% above the support. For example, if the support is around $4 and 10% of above that, you want to dip by around 4.4. Number six is this dip by pattern typically involves with a much bigger liquidity. So for this specific pattern, you can size in tons of size uh, before you break the pattern and of course the bigger the support the better for the size in as well so for this specific pattern i have a couple examples to show you so uh, let's get into it 